A plant's flashy display of colour tells insects and birds that there's food here. Free food! Sweet and sugary nectar. Irresistible. But in nature there's no such thing as a free lunch. Plants use insects, mammals and birds to transport pollen, a light grainy powder that sticks to the insect's body and when it's redeposited by the insect on a neighbouring flower, it begins the process of reproduction. Under the microscope, grains of pollen look incredibly varied, but each species has its own shape and structure, as individual as a fingerprint. Some pollen's really round and has air sacs, so that's usually wind pollinated. Others have uh, spikes on them, so that's more insect pollinated. Some are bigger and they're pollinated by birds. But for some, some of the pollen, we don't really know why. They're different shapes and sizes and have different forms. So we're still working out why there are lots of different types. Right now, the process of analysing pollen is pretty much looking down a microscope at all the different grains. You can't look at all the grains. You have to look at a subsample. Um, it's quite a painstaking approach. And a job no machine was smart enough to do until now. The pollen microscope is an instrument that was developed by Mass University in New Zealand to automatically capture images of little pollen grains on slides to make measurements about those images and that will allow you to classify, identify the type of um, pollen that that particular grain belongs to. Well essentially what the microscope is doing is trying to find certain shapes and sizes of particles and we can actually tell it to find particles of roughly spherical shape and a certain size range. So the microscope lens will actually go over that slide and take a low resolution picture and then it will shift to a second lens and under high magnification the uh, microscope will then take images of uh, the pollen grain right from the top down to the bottom and it takes nine images and stacks those images together a bit like a pack of cards um, and those uh, nine images will then be transformed into a three-dimensional image of the pollen grain. One of the applications is to be able to understand the biodiversity in a local environment. Another is in conjunction with CSIRO entomology. They've got a huge collection of insects that are used in pollinating. So not just bees, but beetles. And we're hoping the instrument will be able to assist in the assessment of what species are important to which ecosystems. Right now there are over 1,300 different species of bees in Australia, but for the most part we don't know what they're doing and how they're doing it. Here we have a variety of bees in the collection. They're data-based, we know exactly where they came from, exactly when they were collected, and they all have pollen on them. If we can come in, automate the process of figuring out all those pollination associations on all these bees, we can build a pretty good library very quickly of pollination biology that's going to help us understand the, the ecosystem services that are supplied by pollinators and help us get the right pieces when we try and put the puzzle back together uh, of restoring ecosystems. The pollen microscope is also expected to make a big contribution to a very ambitious project. The Atlas of Living Australia is going to be the largest integrated aggregation of information about Australian species in forms that can readily be reused by researchers. We do want to make the best possible uh, future for this country, including the preservation as much, of as much as possible of the biodiversity around us. Uh, and in order to do that, understanding what we've got now, what its needs and its characteristics are, uh, is really the baseline from which everything else will follow. Pollen is only one aspect of biodiversity quite clearly, but we are very interested in the fact that uh, it does seem that pollen is something which can very often be identified through the kind of automated processes we're talking about. It's clearly very important for us to understand 
whether plants are going to be able to continue to, to flower, develop pollen, have seeds that are set as, as climate changes, and also to make sure that the insects and other organisms that are responsible for moving pollen between plants are able to continue to do their job. And we understand far too little in detail about the specifics of those interactions. So putting some focus on pollen, putting some effort into improving our ability to recognize pollen from different species allows us to start thinking about different places in that whole chain of connections where we can do some research and uh, gain a better understanding of how effective the pollination services of all of those animals really are.